Ah, well, I suppose it's only 10 o'clock at night. Why not get the grinder out and start uh, dismantling this beast? <laughs> this sheet mold's really thin, actually. That's why it was so easy to cut through. This side's interesting. Cutting through this, my eyes started burning like tear gas was hitting me, so that's probably a seetle. It smells like a seetle or... Yeah, it's, it's got to be a seetle. Just the smell of it and the burning. So it's got acetyl rings and probably rotors or something inside it. Directional rotors. Very, very loose now that it's all uh, dismantled. <laughs> very interesting stuff. I should have really separated the two halves first. Now I've got to carefully put it on the floor and uh, remove it. That seems to discharge into the outside of this jacket. Hmm. Yeah, so the motor's separately wrapped and bolted together, so that'll be a nice little autopsy. And I could probably run it on its own. The pump looks like it's all held together by the outer jacket, so I don't think that one will be running again. Okay, well now I've managed to separate it. The pump end just came off as soon as I split the end of the housing, so that's fairly easy. But the motor itself almost seems like it's sealed against... I doubt it would be sealed against LPG ingression, but... For the most part, LPG comes out through these ports and passes over the motor between the jacket and the motor and then out through these holes here. So it transfers heat from the outside of the motor, which is clearly right there. Like this, There's no gap between the stator housing and the motor itself. And, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to uh, dismantle this. There's bolts on the end, so we'll do that last. I want to get into this pump first. So, might even make a part two just on this motor. Um, it'd be a shame to des destroy it since it has a nice little output shaft on it. But I did get it for autopsy, so who knows. <laughs> it's quite a neat little motor assembly. Wow, this thing is so simple. I was hoping for ceramics, but instead all I got was a acetyl and what looks like nylon. Glass-filled nylon. It's like a 20-stage vacuum cleaner motor. Yet, running dry, it just put out no air. And of course, running it dry also ruined it. <laughs> Looking inside here, there's melted plastic shards and other crap coming out. And The more segments I separate, the more my eyes start burning from burnt acetyl gases. But yeah, they all lock in together. There's little tags on them. And each of these segments just locks in together and stays together as long as this whole assembly is uh, crimped into this little outer shell. There's really nothing to it. It's amazing. There's the end bearing, which is a little roller bearing race in there. So it does have proper bearings, but because the rest of this is plastic, uh, it's dependent on separation from fluid flowing through it and probably is a direct online pump so it's designed to start within so many milliseconds and instantly have fluid going through it otherwise wear and tear occurs as has happened when I overspun it with no fluid at all you can see powdered acetyl deposited on the metal housing too that's not from cutting it, that's from uh, spinning it very fast with nothing going through it I don't know what the centre bearing is it's just a big brass disc That'll be handy for making something. Is it a joining point? No. It's just a continuous spline shaft through the guts of it. I'll take these circlips off and we'll uh, take these impeller, impeller components off. So they're all essentially the same thing. They're just impellers and uh, I suppose they're like volutes. Like a volute inside a water pump. Yeah. Impeller, volute, impeller, volute, so on. Yeah. 
these must act like a volute on a uh, water pump, like a pool pump, directing and accelerating the flow of liquid coming out. And that's nylon, that's glass filled nylon or glass filled polypropylene or something like that. I'll have to do the flame test to tell. Hmm. Okay, well, it's pretty easy to see how this one's built. And I believe this only puts out something like 45 or 50 litres per minute. Um, but remember, liquefied petroleum gas or any kind of petroleum products like that is... Uh, any kind of liquefied gas is, I guess, very low in specific gravity or very low molecular weight. So it requires a lot more effort to pump so many litres per minute. Which is where maybe a... Uh, one horsepower pool pump will circulate more water than this but when it comes to LPG a one horsepower pool pump with an impeller twice the size of this and probably two or three times the volume wouldn't move more than maybe a fraction of a litre per minute in LPG so that's why there's so many of these impellers discharging into each other's manifolds one two three four five six up to twenty I think there is Pretty sure there's 20 of them and they all discharge into each other and just accelerate the flow so it's a three 2.5 or 3 horsepower motor driving all of these impellers just to move 50 litres a minute of liquefied petroleum gas and it's fairly thin stuff this is liquefied butane gas and it's well poor example but it not only evaporates very quick but it's very thin liquid You can see how quickly it uh, dissipates, and uh, just yeah, it's it's completely different to water. So you need a ton of impellers and a ton of yeah, just oh, it's crazy. <laughs> I understand where they're coming from when they build these things like this. Now I already know how liquefied gases behave. I'm working with a lot of refrigeration equipment, and liquid refrigerants are the same deal. Um, very hard to pump in volume. You can increase pressure really easy, but pumping volume of liquid is a completely different thing. So all of these segments are the same deal. They're all impellers, diffusers or volutes or whatever you want to call them, and housings which also contain various grooves to accelerate and continue the flow of liquid up through this column. And the centre bit there is just a centre bearing. That's all that is. It's a nice big heavy brass centre bearing. The bushing on it's gone purpley blue from heat because I kind of abused it. Yeah, it doesn't like me anymore. Look at the colour of that. <laughs> that's what happens when you run your pump dry. And that's probably what that smoky acetyl smell is too not just me cutting into them but the rest of that oh there's a bit of ground up acetyl yeah that housing there is definitely burned up it's all burned up in there yeah this end here has shat itself there's a lot of burnt washes and other crap Compression washes between each layer. Yeah, pretty serious stuff. There we go. I just made a very expensive mess of a lot of little plastic pieces. <laughs> there are some nice spring steel washers in there, which I'll keep. These things here. Well, if the plastic is what I think it is, it will burn without any smoke. But if you extinguish the flame while it's burning and create smoke, it burns your eyes like tear gas. Pretty sure it's acetyl. Or, um, yeah, nasty stuff. Very nasty stuff. That's nice, though. Very nice. Hmm. 
shame there's no ceramics in here because I would like to make a jet engine. <laughs> I do have a big turbocharger, but to be honest, I would like something a little more homemade. But at least we'll work on getting a turbocharger jet working first. Then we'll move on to some more uh, home built stuff. Yeah. Tough washers. It's almost like phenolic or sorry, not phenolic phenolic, um Yeah, printed circuit board stuff. Fiberglass epoxy, that sort of thing. That's got a steel washer pressed into it or actually moulded into it. It's part of the moulding. <laughs> what a mess. Oh, that was fun. That's the pump part done. Uh, I will get into the motor next. Thanks for watching. I think it's time to go to bed. It's about midnight. <laughs> Perfect time to be dismantling pumps and motors. Thanks for watching.